Hi, I'm Claire, and this is LGBTQ plus science fiction and fantasy recommendation. This was originally a top 5 Wednesday slash booktube SFF babbles topic, which means that normally I would pick 5 books to talk about in this video, but I thought it would be a shame to limit myself to just 5. So I'm going to talk about a bunch more than 5, but really, it's not enough. So. I would very very much like to hear people's recommendations in the comments for this video and if you've done this video as well on your channel please leave me a link. First I want to mention Planetfall by Emma Newman. This is a near future science fiction story in which a ship of colonists have left the earth to follow Lee Su Mi, the Pathfinder, a woman who predicted that they would establish a colony in space on a distant planet to find God. One of the colonists who followed Lee Su Mi was Ren. Ren is the 3D printing engineer for the colony when the book opens, which is once the colony has been established for a while, and throughout the book we see that the reason she followed Lee Su Mi to this colony isn't necessarily that she believed, but it is that she was in love with Lee Su Mi. Whilst Lee Su Mi herself isn't actually present, the memories and the knowledge that Ren has of their relationship, even though it's not really well defined to the reader, even if we don't know if it was mutual, if it was unrequited, if they were actually lovers or not, that relationship is very very present for Ren, it's very important for her, it's a central part of the book. One book I'm sure a lot of people will mention is Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire. This is a book about the children who go and visit fairy lands and portal fantasies and what happens to them when they return, when they go back to the regular world and no one believes that they've been on these extraordinary adventures. Our protagonist Nancy is one of these children. She ends up in this school for basically uh, rehabilitating the children of Fairyland to a life in a regular world and she is stated on the page as asexual. She talks about her asexuality with some of the other kids in the school and there is also a secondary character who is trans. This was one of my favorite stories of 2016 and it is nominated for a Hugo Award for Best Novella, very, very deservedly in my opinion. Another one I'm sure a lot of people will mention is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, a proper space opera that is set all on the one spaceship as they make their way to this a small angry planet quite far away to take a job there and the crew in this book is absolutely delightful. There are a lot of wonderful relationships in this book, be they friendships or romantic relationships and one of them is the relationship between the newest crew member on the Wayfarer, a young woman called Rosemary, and the Andrix Sissix who is an alien whose species just use physical intimacy and sex as something a lot more common than humans do. They just have a need to be close to each other and that's how they relate to each other. Rosemary and Sissix become friends and then later on they start a physical relationship. Whether you want to see that as something romantic or romantic on one side or just physical, that's really kind of left up to your own interpretation, I think. Next up is another short work that I really, really loved from 2016, and that is Superior by Jessica Lack. This is an absolutely delightful, adorable, star-crossed lovers story about superheroes. Our protagonist is a kid called Jamie, who is the intern to Captain Superior, the biggest superhero in town, and as such he has to deal with things like getting kidnapped fairly regularly. One day he he is captured by Captain Superior's nemesis of the week and finds that this particular supervillain also has an intern called Tad and Tad is kind of hot and they get along really well but sparks fly. 
I'm sure you can tell where this is going. It's an absolutely delightful story. It's a novelette, so you can read it really, really quickly. If you're a fan of um, superhero fan fiction, particularly Marvel Cinematic Universe and things like that, I think you will love this. I absolutely, absolutely adored it. I'm fairly sure I remember Jamie identifying himself as bisexual on the page. Next is another superhero story with a bisexual protagonist and that is Not Your Psychic by C.B. Lee. This is a young adult novel about a girl called Jessica whose family are all superheroes but she hasn't manifested any superhero powers yet and because she's 17 she knows that she's not going to anymore. She's of course really disappointed but she picks herself up and she finds herself an internship at a local uh, medical scientific research kind of a company. She works for a masked person called M and also her crush from school Abby happens to work in the same place. She's starting to realize that she has feelings for M as well as feelings for Abby but also she's never really seen Abby and M together in the same spot so she's starting to realize that there's something there and that maybe her feelings for Abby aren't as unrequited as she once thought they were. This is an absolutely delightful and fun story that plays with the tropes of the superhero genre really well. There is also a secondary character, one of Jess's best friends who is a trans guy and they have conversations about his pronouns and things like that and it's really great and refreshing to see these conversations in a book because they are conversations that people have in everyday life but you never see them in books or on TV or in media in general. And I know that the sequel which comes out this year I think is about this trans character so I'll be very excited to see a book where he gets to be the main character. Next is one of my favorite graphic stories of all time and that is Nimona by Noel Stevenson. This is of course about Nimona, a young shape-shifting girl who decides to appoint herself as the sidekick to Lord Ballister Blackheart, uh, the villain of the piece quote-unquote. Of course the relationship between Ballister and Nimona is incredibly important but just as important to the narrative is the relationship between Lord Ballister Blackheart and his arch nemesis Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin. They were best friends growing up, absolutely inseparable. They went to Knight Academy together and were going to be knights and spend their lives working together as knights except something real bad happened and Ballister lost an arm and blamed Ambrosius. To be fair it was Ambrosius's fault, kind of and now they've been nemeses for years and through the course of the story they learn to trust each other again and by the end of the story they have reunited, they have rebuilt their friendship and their relationship as well. During the course of the story Ballister refers to Ambrosius as someone he loves and there is a lot of like trying to save each other's lives and taking great risks to save each other's lives. They end the story holding hands and I'm pretty sure that Noelle Stevenson has said in interviews before that if she were writing this book now with more experience she would make it even more textually obvious that they are now a couple but that is definitely the intention and it's definitely very very obvious at least for an adult reader that that's what's going on and it's delightful. I just finished reading The Collapsing Empire by John Scalzi this month and I absolutely absolutely adored it. It's a space opera that is set in a world where all of these planets are linked together by the flow which is what permits ships to travel from one planet to another and each planet needs all of the others to survive in this interplanetary empire that they have built because of course not every planet produces every single thing except the flow is starting to break down and soon every planet will be cut off from every other planet. Our main characters include the emperor of these worlds who is just trying to figure out how to keep all of this together as well as 
one of the scientists who is studying this phenomenon and kind of predicting what's gonna happen, and a young woman from one of the richest merchant families in this world who was traveling at the time that these events all kicked off and finds herself caught in all of this. And it's her I want to talk about in more detail. The Lady Kiva is an incredibly badass character, she is foul-mouthed, she is a great negotiator who doesn't really take no for an answer when she does business deals. She is also a bisexual character. Now bisexuality is a very well-established part of this world that's generally accepted. The Emperor at some point considers marrying another woman if that would be more beneficial for her reign in terms of an alliance with another merchant house, but she doesn't really want to do that because that's not her personal preference. The Lady Kiva, however, is stated as bisexual on the page and she has relationships with men and with women kind of throughout the books. She's also a woman with an active sexuality who isn't judged for it and that's kind of rare. She is just a great character and I can't wait to read more about her in the next book in the series. And finally, before I sign off, I want to give a quick shout out to The Stars of Legion by Cameron Hurley, which she has described as lesbians in space, which I think is mostly because there are no men in this book. I have just started reading it, I'm still in the middle of it, so I can't really tell you whether I recommend it or not, but I'm enjoying it so far and there's definitely already sparks flying between our main protagonist and one of the women who's taking care of her. But the whole plot of the book is that the main character has amnesia and has to try and recover her memories, so we don't really know what's going on at this time. It's really weird though and I'm really enjoying it. So that's it, these were my recommendations for science fiction and fantasy novels with LGBTQ plus characters. Let me know in the comments below if you have more recommendations or suggestions for me because I'm always looking to read books that are more representative of the real world. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check a recent video right about here and if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button on my face to see more videos from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon. It's so good.